Hi there, how are you? Yay! Excited? Yay! Well, that's a relief. Um, <clears throat> well, you kind of, I guess you know why you're here, so I'll keep it fairly brief. My name's Pete Perfides. I'm here to introduce a band who have legions of fans all over the world, and I really do mean all over the world. They pack out stadiums on every continent. Um, they've been a little bit quiet lately. They've kept a low profile ever since those two triumphant O2 shows, four years ago now, I think. Um, they've enjoyed a staggering 12 million sales um, ever since the release of Hopes and Fears, their debut album, which was eight years ago. How time flies. And they have a wonderful new album. I thought I'd bring this out because it's very nice. Do you remember these? These are what we had before CDs. Very nice. I know, no expense spared, eh? <coughs> and um, I've, I've been very privileged, privileged to listen to this record several times and really got to know it. And it really is a band who, at the peak of their powers, understanding just how uniquely gifted they are at doing what they do. Um, songs that, when you get to know them, when you go and see them, when they go on tour later on this year, you'll enjoy seeing them in a crowd so much. It seems like they were purpose-built for this. Without any further ado, they're just over there. Shall we say hello to Keen? Yeah. Tom, Tim, Richard, and Jesse. How's it going, guys? Uh, not too bad. I've had a little stomach issue for the last few days. <laughs> but I won't go on about that. Nobody needs to hear about that, do they? It's touch and go then, isn't it? <laughs> Let's hope not, for the sake of this. No pressure. There are people from all over the world tuning in to watch you right now. You got anything to say to them? I think I'd be more worried about the people in the front row in case <laughs> something comes back up from dinner. Moving swiftly on. Yeah. <laughs> um, just in case anyone's wandered into the room accidentally and haven't got a clue who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, <laughs> how are you? All right. <laughs> Is this your first high profile engagement as a, a, for, a, for a proper member of Keen? I thought you meant engagement in a, in a marital sense, because I was engaged to Paris Hilton for a couple of years. And then uh, we broke up, but it's another story. <laughs> Do you want to discuss this in private? <laughs> um, well, Jesse's a new boy. How, how, how do you feel you're fitting in so far? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Why have I got the mic? <laughs> we, we should be the ones who are answering that question. Tim, how's Jesse fitting in? Brilliantly. We, we love him, um, you know, in spite of his faults. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's fantastic. He's, he, he makes, he's a much better musician than the rest of us, unfortunately. <laughs> Are we allowed to swear on this? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh God, it's all going pear shaped. So, uh, Jesse, notwithstanding, let's just, uh, let's remind ourselves: how long is it since you have been together in a band now? Uh, too long. Um, no, how long is it? I mean, we, it's impossible to describe because uh, I don't remember first meeting Tim um, or Richard. In fact, I probably don't <coughs> even remember first meeting Jesse. Um, <laughs> But uh, it would have been when I was uh, about zero and Tim was about three. So um, not long after that, the music began because I was wailing. <laughs> and <laughs> Tim was obsessed with writing songs from about the age of three, I should imagine. Can you remember the first song that Tim wrote? I can, uh, yeah, I wrote a song um, called Refrain, Refrain from Breaking My Heart Again. These tears that fall like rain. <laughs> uh, who, who is it about? 
These tears that fall like rain are here. Don't shatter my hopes again. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was, it was a template. The template was there already. Tim, who broke your heart? <laughs> I, don't, I was just, you You're know, my friends. copying Buddy Holly or something. It's just sort of, um, I like Tom's first song. How does that one go? Oh, yes, it went, I am so cool, I am so cool, I am so cool, I am so cool. And then my mum in the background said, shut up, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing much has changed, really, has it? No, it's just these guys instead of my mum now. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's usually a, a, a song, it's sort of in the life of every band, that sort of, sort of raises the stakes of it, isn't there? And, and sort of makes you realise that maybe it's not such an insane idea that you might be able to do this for a living. Can you remember what that song was for you? I'd say probably this is the last time, um, which the first time we played it was the last show we ever did with our guitarist, Dominic. So I remember looking at him, we were playing a song called This Is The Last Time, knowing that it was the last time he was going to play with us at the Bull and Gate, I think, in Kentish Town. It was really weird. Yeah, just over there, apparently. Um, yeah, because that, th that song really was a step forward, I think, in, in songwriting. And when would this have been? Just remind us. 2000, maybe? 2001, maybe? Yeah, I think early 2001. Um, <laughs> and, and Bed Shaped was around a similar time, wasn't it? So, yeah. There was a, 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 you, I don't think a lot of people know this, but you, there was a certain amount of hardship, wasn't there? This sort of... You, you lived together for a while, didn't you? And you sort of, wasn't this story about how Tim, you had to, you sort of volunteered to undergo medical experiments in order to finance the band? <laughs> yeah, that's how I ended up like this. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I, yeah, I used to, d I only did it a couple of times actually, but it was one of those things where you have to go and, you know, they give you all these pills <laughs> and then see, <laughs> you have to answer all these questions and you don't, they don't react, you know, when, when you, you answer the questions, they sort of get, just go, mm hmm, and you, you've no idea if you're talking gibberish or, you know, or they've, they've seen some sign that, you're, you know, that your brain is permanently damaged by whatever they've just given you. And uh, um, unfortunately, my mum is a neurologist, um, so <laughs> when, I t when I told her, she was not happy at all. She went absolutely mental and, and started telling me all the these terrible things that were going to ha happen to me, you know, over the next few years. So I felt pretty good after that. You're going to be delusional. You're going to join a band. You're going to you're going to think you can rule the world and tour it and be a rock star. All these crazy. Maybe lies. it's helped with your songwriting. Maybe it's kind of triggered some kind of. Maybe it was some kind of songwriting medicine. Yeah. If only if only there was such a thing. The side effects were too strong, though. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> It sounds like, leading up to this album, it sounds like you've taken some kind of crazy songwriting medicine because haven't you written about 100 songs in the lead up to it? Well, yes. I actually, I, I was, well, I've got you to thank for this, Pete, because I, this, I told you and I've been asked in pretty much every interview we've done over the, you know, in the last month or so, whether it's true that I wrote 100 songs and I thought I'll count them. So I actually, when we were on the plane the other day, I counted them and it was 82. So I have, I'm guilty of slight exaggeration. But that's only, that's only the ones I did demos. You're, you're, you're hardly a slouch, really. 82, <laughs> that's, you know. I can think you can give yourself some latitude. Lazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lazy liar. <laughs> so terrible. And there is, a, there is a kind of a, a parallel universe, isn't there, in which somewhere out there in a parallel universe, you are Coldplay's keyboard player, aren't you? <laughs> well... Um, yeah, I mean, I c there was there was a moment when um, Chris did ask about that, um, but it w yeah, we were sitting in a pub somewhere um, on the yeah Tottenham Court Road or somewhere, and uh, yeah, but it's funny how they, you know, I, I mean, I would have been up for it to be quite honest. I was ready to ditch these guys. <laughs> 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 he's never said that before, <laughs> and he's done it in front of a lot of witnesses, yeah. just in case. Yeah, but they changed, they, I guess they just changed their mind. But I keep asking him, even now. Um, yeah. <laughs> but he's, he's obsessed with doing it himself. Well, well, no, well the one day, you see, it's like, you know, like sort of New Kids on the Block and the Backstreet Boys are doing a tour together around the world. And they, they're calling themselves like New Kids on the Backstreet or something like that. So in years to come, they, there could be a similar arrangement. Isn't that just 
a terrifying thought. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that on ice for the meantime. Um, so, um, so incredibly strong album. And it sounds like you really took your time sort of getting it right. Is that the case? I don't think it sounds like we took our time. I mean, four years <laughs> is proof that we took far too long. <laughs> no, I think we, we wanted to prepare. That, the thing about us as a band is we're kind of, we seem to be quite reactionary. So what we do with one album, we then want to do the opposite with the next one. And with Perfect Symmetry, we, we uh, made everything um, in this kind of um, world of sort of exuberance and excitement, experimentation. And um, we then had this record that we were so excited about. And as soon as Spiralling was mastered and ready to go, before the record was even finished, we thought, let's put that out, get that out there. We hadn't even made a video for it. You know, things were kind of a bit undercooked in some respects. So with this album, we thought, um, instead of taking a year, we'll take four. <laughs> and, uh, Which is fine for you, because you can kind of kick back and relax, because you're not writing the song. So wh what do you three do <laughs> while he's sort of slaving away over a hot keyboard? You sit there and make sure he gets on with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prod him. They send me, they send me postcards from like Hawaii and stuff. It's <laughs> like Richard in a... A little boat with a garland around his neck playing <laughs> the ukulele and stuff. And they just say, sucker. 